Testing, testing, one, two. Okay, we're live. Hi, guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, very exciting video as we're going to go through the best ranked VR headsets for 2022, supposedly, by PC VR Mac for Southeast Asia. Wait for that part because it's crazy what they wrote. Anyway, before we go there, guys, just want, just want to remind you that we are giving away a brand new HP Reverb G2 sponsored by HP and also a brand new pair of cyber shoes sponsored by cyber shoes. I'll be giving away a brand new also, uh, sorry, a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you can redeem for your Oculus MetaQuest store uh, or Viveport store or Steam VR store. It'll be completely up to you and more keys and more. So do hit the enable bell after you subscribe because we will be making the announcement, by the way, on December 29, even though we have smashed the 9,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, because on December 28, we're going to announce two winners who can go to the VRCover.com's website and pick any item that you guys want up to 29 US dollars or 29 euros. Link in the description below and also the pinned comments below as to how to enter that competition. So do make sure you hit the enable bell after you subscribe and go to the link below to enter the VRCover.com's competition. All right, so let's just transition over to the article by PC magazine in Southeast Asia. Guys, there are huge amount of problems when it comes to Asia and how they market um, VR headsets. Let me just show you, for example, on our Twitter, what we posted very recently. I went to the opticians and I found this. This is what they're selling in Southeast Asia, guys. The VR One Plus, which is from 2017. What are they doing selling this kind of crap in Southeast Asia? This is why we're getting a bad rep in VR. And again, PC VR magazine just released an article about the best VR headset for 2022, written by Will Greenwald on December 3rd, who, by the way, I don't think has a clue about VR and what VR is about, but let's go through uh, the actual article as to the VR headsets that they supposedly think are the best for 2022. And FYI, guys, by the way, I just want to, to mention this very quickly. 2022, we don't know what the best VR headset in 2022 will be. Why? because there are so many new ones that are going to be coming out in 2022, FYI. So I think the title of this article is a little bit misleading because, as I mentioned, there are going to be so many new headsets and we'll go through that. So do make sure you watch the video until the end as we'll go through various different things. So first of all, they say the number one is the Oculus Quest 2, FYI. It's no longer called the Oculus Quest 2. It is called the MetaQuest 2. They have officially changed the name. It's on the website. Um, now, the first thing is, they say that the, in the Oculus Quest 2, it is powered by a Snapdragon. Let me just make it as big as possible so you can actually see. He says that it's powered by a Snapdragon 835, guys. Is this true? Uh, no, it's not. It is powered by the XR2 chipset, which is so much more powerful than the Snapdragon 835. So first of all, big, huge mistake by such a huge branded magazine, the PC Mag. I mean, this is a massive magazine here in Asia. Anyway, a lot of people read this thing. And I can't believe that they, get this, they give this kind of false information. It is not a Snapdragon 835. It is powered by the XR2. Please get it right, because the XR2 can do mixed reality. The Snapdragon 835 cannot do mixed reality. Now, first of all, I would not put the Oculus Meta Quest 2 as the, the best headset to get in 2022 uh, because it's, it, it, oh man, uh, simply because of all the data and it, it's not really a, uh, it's a double-edged sword, the, the Oculus product, right? It's more of a spying machine. It's more of a, it's more of a something to take your, your, your data and, and use it for subliminal messaging. It's not really something that is friendly for the consumer, in my honest personal opinion. But it is true. It is the most advanced technologically made VR headset to date on the market simply because you can have mixed reality at the moment versus other VR headsets which do not have mixed reality. But if 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 data is something that is extremely important to you and you want to keep your data very private and you don't want to be at all um, influenced in terms of your lifestyle habits or your buying habits and you know have 20 million 2 million data points taken from you and all your conversations recorded uh, and also all your surroundings to be recorded because now of course cameras can record all your surroundings the microphone can record all your conversations both in VR and also outside of VR because it can pick up all the sound around you 
as well. And of course, they also record all your conversations when you have parties with your friends in virtual reality and all these kinds of things. So do be very cautious and you do need a Facebook account currently and you will need a Meta uh, account in the future, most probably, although we can't speculate, uh, to power or to enter the actual headset itself, which any other VR headset, you do not need to do that, FYI. However, I'd just like to mention that there is no perfect VR headset. We're gonna go through them each one by one. Um, you know, so let's, let's, let's just go through it. Now, the thing is with the actual specs uh, of the Oculus Quest 2, if I just transition over very quickly, uh, specifications. There we go. So the first thing is the, the resolution is not super good. The battery life is okay, two, three hours. Um, it does have an XR2 chip, which is extremely good, I would like to say. Uh, but now XR2 is actually pretty much standard in most VR headsets. FYI, the only good thing about this specific headset is that you don't need to plug it into a computer. You can run it completely wirelessly. Um, so that is you know, that is quite good, I would say, in, 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 in that respect. And that is why it is the most advanced technologically, um, you know, I, I, I would say. Uh, the other thing is, I believe it runs on a six gigabyte RAM, which is okay. It's not perfect, but it's, I would say, pretty much standard in terms of, um, you know, what's available in VR. And it can run up to 120 hertz, um, you know, or 90 hertz is most what all games are powered in VR today uh, who run on the Oculus Quest 2, which is higher than the norm, which is normally 72 hertz. So it just means that basically you'll get better, um, you know, you'll, you'll get better, let's say, um, the, the, the games will run a little bit smoother, uh, the frame rates will be faster, so you can get to see what's going on in VR a little better. It won't be so blurry in between each frame. So 90 hertz, 120 hertz is of course much better than you know what could be running in other kind of VR headsets at this moment in time. But I still wouldn't say it's the best VR headset simply because of all the scandals that Meta has had uh, and all the technology uh, the reason why they've put it and the reason also is killing the competition because its price is so low. So that is also uh, also why Win says the best VR headset to get if you want to get into VR. But in terms of technology, yes, it is the most advanced. That is very true. Uh, I also cannot deny uh, those kind of things. So let's just go back to uh, PC VR mags thing. Now, the second headset that they say is the best is the Valve Index. I'm so sorry, you know, as much as, okay, let's just go through the specs of the Valve Index first. Uh, so let's just put Valve Index uh, versus Oculus Quest 2 specs. There we go. Um, okay, let's go here, side by side. So now, <laughs> The Valve Index, as much as you love it, and there is a big, of course, community of people who have bought the Valve Index because Valve owned another platform which is called Steam. Steam is the world's most preferred choice platform to go to download VR content, by the way. So, of course, they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who go there. So when they released a VR headset, it only made sense that most people uh, went to actually you know, uh, purchase the Valve Index and it automatically became uh, a, a, a very big hit because, you know, of, uh, let, let, sorry, I'm just trying to Valve Index, I should have done this before, uh, HP Reverb G2 side by side specs. Okay, there we go. Uh, I think it'll be here. Hopefully it's here. Hopefully we can see it. Okay, um, so, Let's just go back to, to, you know, to the videos, what I was trying to explain. Now, the Valve Index has a big following of people who have purchased it. So they've been king of PC VR for quite a while. However, what I'm really shocked about is they didn't mention anything, two things. They didn't mention two things in the article. The first thing is, um, first of all, you need base stations to power the Valve Index. Now, there's nothing wrong in base stations other than it is starting to become obsolete technology now because all the latest VR headsets, what you need to know, don't use base stations anymore. They're using what's called inside-out tracking, which basically means that instead of putting these things around your room, which require wires to put around and all this kind of stuff, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get the tracking because you need to add a little few more trackers around your room for uh, basically the VR headset to know where it is and also for the controllers to know where they are relatively uh, relative to the VR headset and also the base stations as well. So now what's going on is if I just show you very quickly, for example, uh, here, let me just transition. 
is on the HP Reverb G2, you have the trackers here on the cameras. You can see them, one here, one here, one on the side here, and then another one on the side here. So HTC, Varsho, you know, uh, Oculus, uh, Meta, uh, HP, you know, everyone, uh, even the future headsets that come now, all of them are having inside out tracking. So you don't need base stations anymore. And also the other thing is that uh, the actual resolution of the uh, Valve Index compared to the HP Reverb G2 is much less. It's 1600 by 1440 pixels per eye versus 2160 by 2160, which is 4K per eye for the HP Reverb G2. So again, what the hell is PC Mac talking about in terms of telling people that, let me just transition over, uh, transition to the small cam, transition, okay, there we go. So. You know, what the hell is PC Mag saying that the Valve Index is the best VR headset of 2022? I'm sorry, there are a lot of people who love the Valve Index, don't get me wrong. And the controllers, which we'll talk about very uh, separately in just a moment, are amazing, yes. But at the end of the day, it is not a better headset than the HP Reverb G2. I'm very sorry. The HP Reverb G2, of, by the way, is cheaper than the Valve Index. It is 600 US dollars versus the Valve Index, which is a thousand US dollars. But not only are you saving money on the HP Reverb G2, it's a better headset. It is a better headset than the HP Reverb G2. It is really that simple. Okay, now in terms of field of view, okay, maybe with the HP Reverb G2, you're gonna give away uh, a, a bit less of field of view with the HP Reverb G2 compared to the Valve Index. That is, okay, very possible, but the refresh rate is still 90 Hertz uh, on the HP Reverb G2. Uh, okay, the Valve Index has refresh rate of 120, but guys, let's not forget that, you know, uh, as sorry, as standard, but it can go up to uh, as 144 Hertz in experimental mode. But guys, let's not forget that most most um, VR titles are not built for that kind of frame rate. It's not because the, 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 on paper the, 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 the VR headset can handle up to that much that it means that all the games will be running at that frame rate. No, 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 no. The developers have to make sure that the apps they develop can run at that frame rate. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if it can go up to 100 or 2000 um, hertz, uh, frame rates, frame per second, because if the app's not developed at that specific frame rate, it will not run at a specific frame rate. It's that simple. So 90 hertz refresh rate is perfectly good enough. You don't need 120. That is why the HP Reverb G2 is still better than for value for money than the, than, than, than the Valve Index. I'm just saying, you're better off saving 400 US dollars on an HP Reverb G2 than you are spending an extra 400 US dollars on a Valve Index is my point. Even though the Valve Index has on paper some things here and there which are better, of course, undoubtedly, than the HP Reverb G2 is all I'm saying. Okay, so PC Mag, I'm very sorry, but you don't really know, I feel, what you're really talking about, or that writer doesn't really know what he's talking about when it comes to actually what is better or what is available today is my point, because there are some compromises in the HP Reverb G2 on paper, but the HP Reverb G2, at the end of the day, is still a better headset than the uh, Valve Index, I'm sorry, you're going to get better out of your HP Reverb G2 than you, will, than you will with the Valve Index. However, the controllers of the Valve Index are much better than the HP Reverb G2. That is very true. As I keep telling you guys, there is no perfect headset in VR today. So Valve Index controllers uh, uh, enable you to do amazing things. Amazing things. As Let me just show you. Uh, then let, just, let me just get rid of the ads very quickly. Okay, so with the Valve Index, the controllers are amazing, for sure. That is, that is for sure, because it enables you to basically have uh, the ability to, uh, to close every single finger one by one, um, you know, compared to the HP Reverb G2, for example, the controllers or any other controllers on the market, sorry, not just the HP Reverb G2, do not enable you to do this at the moment in time. So the, but however, you can purchase 
the uh, Valve Index controllers and run it on other VR headsets, which we will talk about in just a moment. Um, you know, so just just bear with me. But you know, the other the other thing that PC Mac has said is the next best headset to get is the HTC Vive Pro. Oh my God! I mean, I can't believe this when I read this kind of shit. Sorry, this kind of stuff, because. As much as I love HTC, I love HTC. I love the products. I love the company. I love what they do. And I hope that one day we can work with them. However, the HTC Vive Pro, even though on paper, the specs are not bad. That is very true. Let me just go here. Uh, you can go up to 120 degrees of field of view, 90 hertz refresh rate. And let's not forget that the uh, pixels inside of the VR headset are 2448 by 2448, which means it is better, of course, it is better, of course, than the HP Reverb G2 on paper. But the HP Reverb G2 is still king. Why? Why hasn't PC Mac talked about this? Well, two reasons. First of all, you're still going to need these base stations here to run it because you're going to need these controllers. You are going to need these controllers to run your HP, uh, your HTC Vive Pro 2. Why? Because the current controllers that are provided with the HTC Vive Pro 2 are the frigging ones, which is these things, uh, ones, controllers, HTC. These are the controllers that you'll be needing for the HTC. And believe me, there are so many people out there who have done countless amount of videos about these controllers. They're heavy as hell. They're not user-friendly whatsoever. And you're gonna have a horrible experience in VR with these controllers. They're so outdated. They're like three, four, or I think they're three or four years old, at least three years old, outdated. Believe me, you do not want to be in VR using these controllers. You're going to need the one controllers. Uh, sorry, you're going to need the, H, the, the Valve Index controllers to use your HTC Vive Pro 2, which basically means that the price of the HTC Vive Pro 2 with the base stations, with the, uh, uh, with the Valve Index controllers, are going to is going to be wait for it is going to be where are you where is it where is the price here it's going to be a whopping 2836 US dollars why doesn't PC Mac talk about this kind of stuff which is super important guys the HP Reverb G2 I'm sorry is still king when it comes to the number 2 Best VR, oh, sorry, I just bit my tongue. Oh my God. Oh. The HP Reverb G2 is still king of the best VR headset at the moment. The number one VR headset to get for PC VR at this moment in time. Best value for money, I'm telling you right now. However, if you really want to splash your cash and you really want the best VR headset that money can buy, not the best value for money, the best VR headset that money can buy, then please, please, please go and buy this VR headset. Because this has 12 megapixels of graphics. It has a 200 hertz eye tracking, it has ultra leap with uh, inbuilt hand tracking. This is the best VR headset that money can buy, has 115 degrees field of view, which is really not bad comparing to what's available today. And it is going to cost you at least 3000 US dollars or more. Uh, and you're going to need the valve index controllers as well. And the base stations as well. This is going to, this is going to set you back at least 5000 US dollars with everything put together, taxes, shipping, uh, valve index controllers, base stations, the headset itself, everything. It's going to set you a lot of money, but this is the best VR headset that money can by today. Let's go back into the PC magazine. Oh, I just can't believe. Then the other thing that they say, the best, oh my God, the best VR headset to buy, HTC Vive Cosmos. Guys, I have nothing against HTC. As I said, they make good products. I love HTC. I hope to work with them one day. But at the end of the day, 
HTC Vive Cosmos, I can't believe this. So many, so many people have been complaining about the tracking of this headset. So many people have been complaining about the software that's run inside of this headset. It is not a headset that you want to buy for 699 US dollars. Guys, again, if I just transition again, Let me just uh, do this to make sure transition pro, yes. Guys, for 600 US dollars, you're gonna have this. It's a better headset for value for money than the HTC Vive Cosmos. Now, the only thing that this Cosmos has in terms of similarities is inside that tracking. So you have the tracking from the cameras here. You don't need any base stations. However, the tracking of the controllers are much better on the HP Reverb G2 than they are by a mile on the Cosmos, which is why the Cosmos has been a flop and no one's buying it. Like no, not many people that I personally know in the industry are buying the Cosmos. Only a few people have it. Not many people have it. They buy this one, they don't buy the Cosmos. I'm telling you now, I don't even know why it's doing on the PC Mag magazine's feature as one of the best headsets to buy. It is misinformation by a mile. I mean, I just can't believe this. And this is why virtual reality is having such a bad rep at the moment. Let's just go to the specs. Here, it's here. Now, the specs are this. 110 degrees field of view, okay, slightly better than the HP Reverb G2 on paper. But honestly, 20 degrees is not gonna make that much of a big difference, honestly speaking. Um, in terms of the specs, it has four gigabytes of memory, four gigs of memory compared to six gigabytes of memory on the HP Reverb G2. So HP Reverb G2 memory specs. Please load. Sorry, it has eight gigabytes of RAM. So the HP Reverb G2 has twice as more gigabytes of RAM than the Vive Cosmos, FYI. The Vive Cosmos costs more than the HP Reverb G2. Therefore, you're gonna save even more money with your HP Reverb G2. Uh, Vive Cosmos uh, lens resolution. I always prefer to read directly. It has much less res lens resolutions, 1440 by 1700. I mean, come on guys, compared to 2160 by 2160 with the HP Reverb G2, I mean, come on guys. Why is VR having a bad reputation? There's so many people who never tried VR, they buy these crappy things from these reputable magazines supposedly, and then they're gonna complain that they don't have a good experience or they're gonna feel cheated because someone else bought another VR headset because they read another magazine. Say, why did you buy this thing? You should have bought this thing, HP Reverb G2. You, should, you would have saved money, you would have had a better experience in VR, tracking much better, resolution much better, blah, blah, blah. Why is PC Mag Asia telling people to buy this? Why isn't the HP Reverb G2 in this thing? And then they go and write about this Sony PlayStation VR. I mean, come on guys. We all know that it, next year in Q2, now it is very true that it is possible to buy the PlayStation VR at the moment, a uh, VR headset, if you want to enjoy PlayStation games in virtual reality, sure. But guys, come on. Why didn't they mention anything about the PlayStation 5, the PSVR 2? PSVR 2 release date. We all know that it's coming next year, very soon. There's a lot of uh, articles written about it. We all know that it's coming. Uh, we think it's gonna be Q2 or Q3 of 2022. It could be closer, of course. We're not quite sure exactly as to when, but there's so many articles written about this. Okay, so the reveal, oh, it was revealed in March, 2021, by the way. Uh, we know it's on the way, we know it's in production, we know it's gonna be sold, we know it's not just rumors and it's not something that, perhaps maybe coming out in the future. You know, there are details about the resolution, which is gonna be 20, 2000 by 2040 pixels per eye. Uh, we know that it's gonna be uh, potentially wireless as well as uh, wired cable to your PS VR, uh, because there might be some games that could run wirelessly. Uh, we also know that the controllers will have this design. You know, there's a lot of information about this. I don't really know why they haven't written anything about it in their article. Like why, why haven't you done that? 
why are you telling people to go and buy this when we fully know that in six months time there will be a new PSVR 2 headset and the title of your magazine of your your thing is best VR headsets for 2022. I don't understand what you're saying Mr. Will Greenwald. What do you know about the VR industry? It doesn't sound like you know much about it especially as you wrote inside of here that the the Oculus Quest, which is called MetaQuest 2, by the way, has a Snapdragon 865 when we all know it does not. It has an XR2 chip. Who is vetting these things? And then they talk about the Windows Mixed Reality. They are saying that you should go <laughs> and buy this headset. I mean, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm laughing at this thing. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Guys, this is why the industry is having such a bad reputation. Oh my God, I just can't believe it. Where is the frigging HP Reverb T2? Let me just read this. Microsoft has been promoting its partnership with multiple headset manufacturers to produce a series of Windows 10 mixed reality headsets for the last few years. The distinction between virtual reality and mixed reality is so far dubious. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh my God, I can't believe this. I just think it's so funny that people reshare these articles and people don't bother to read these articles before resharing them online because that's where I found the FYI. I mean, I just can't believe that this is the kind of stuff. Guys, let me reiterate just one more time for you. By the way, we are giving away a brand new HP Reverb to Make sure to enable the bell after you subscribe as we will announce how to enter the competition on December 29th after we will reveal two winners who can go to the vrcover.com's website to pick any item that they want up to 29 US dollars or 29 euros. Link in the description below and the pinned comments below how to enter that competition. But guys, the HP Reverb 2 is not dubious. It is not dubious. And, and, and what, about, what about the HoloLens? HoloLens 2 is certainly not dubious. The HoloLens 2 is not dubious. It is an amazing headset for, v, for AR, yes. It is very expensive. Uh, it is not meant for uh, consumer. It is meant for, of course, the... Uh, let me just... Okay, it's not meant for consumers, of course, it's meant for businesses. But I'm just saying the Windows Mixed Reality are not dubious. They have state-of-the-art AR and VR. You cannot say the Mixed Reality is dubious now. Maybe a year or two years ago, sure. But not now, guys. Not now. Not today. I mean, I cannot believe that this writer and this magazine allows these kind of things to be said. And then they talk about, what about phone-based VR? And they say, VR headsets that use smartphone to serve as both the brains and display of the system were once commonplace with Google Cardboard, Samsung Gear VR, letting anyone with compatible phone VR experience under 50, 150 US dollars. These gadgets have slowed to trickle and Google has discontinued Daydream View headset while Samsung has updated their Gear VR since the Galaxy 9's arrival, S9 arrival. Um, okay. Um, but by the way, what is the latest Samsung phone? Latest Samsung phone 2021. The M32, M51. The newest phone is for Samsung Galaxy Note 20. I mean, okay, you want to mention the S9. All right, fine, if you want. But the software ecosystem and support for them are almost nil for now. Phone-based VR is effectively dead. Okay, thank you for writing that. Thank you very much. That's the only thing you got right in your article today. Congratulations to you. Awesome. You got it right on that one. Yes, you got it right. Good information. No misinformation there. Great. But that's the only thing you got right in your article, FYI. FYI. Um, the best augmented reality headsets. You might have seen uh, some other famous visual uh, headsets pop up over the last few years, including Microsoft HoloLens and Magic Leap 1. Uh, they aren't on this list for a few reasons, but the biggest one is that the augmented reality uh, AR headsets, not virtual reality headsets, and yes, there's a difference. Uh, yeah, we know there's a difference. Thank you very much. However, you should have mentioned this one, uh, which is the... Uh, 
Uh, let me just go to my Yahoo very quickly. Uh, go to mail. Oh, I can just do it here. So it's Enreal. You should have mentioned this one. Because the most powerful uh, VR headset at the moment is the Enreal's augmented reality glass. Okay, uh, they're worth 600 US dollars. They're available all over the US. Uh, US. Um, they did a deal with Verizon, which is amazing. They're also uh, available, by the way, uh, in some parts of Europe as well. Let me just go here. They've been reviewed by various different people. And honestly speaking, a lot of people have said that they're good. You know, they have good apps inside. Okay, they're not there yet. They're not at the, the level of, let's say, the Oculus MetaQuest store, for sure. But at the end of the day, um, you know, they're, they're a very decent... Okay, my... Okay, uh, they're very 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 decent pair of glasses, of AR glasses. There's a lot you can do in them. There are people developing some really cool games in there as well at the moment. There's a lot you can do. You can watch TV, you can browse the web. There's just... Quite a few things you can do at the moment. And honestly speaking, this is something that should have been talked about. Let me just play it again on a high resolution. There we go. This is something that should have been spoken about or written about in the PC Mag, um, in the PC Mag article. This is definitely something that should have been written about. For sure. It should have been in there. It is there. This is what you can buy today. Why wasn't it mentioned inside? Why? And then, of course, the other, uh, the other headset that should have been mentioned inside is the HTC Vive Focus 3, because it is a competitor to both the HTC Vive Focus 3 and also, of course, the Pico Neo 3 Pro. Why weren't they mentioned? Because, by the way, if we compare the HTC Vive Focus 3, it is $1,300. US the, uh, the, uh, the, Vive, the Pico Neo 3 Pro is only $600 or $700. US now, the Pico, 3, Pico Neo 3 Pro, by the way, wins hands down as the best standalone VR headset for enterprise. Why? Because there are a lot of issues with the Vive Focus 3 in terms of the sweet spot. The Pico Neo 3 Pro has no issues with the sweet spot. It is amazing clarity inside of the VR headset for standalone VR. With a DP4 ca cable, it is perfectly good enough for first-time uh, people who aren't used to, let's say, the HP Reverb D2 PC VR because there are a little bit of screen door effect with the DP4K uh, cable when it comes to um, you know, the, 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 the Pico Neo. That's true, a little bit of screen door effect here, but it's not going to bother your average Joe, for, to be honest with you. It bothers me a little bit because I'm so used to VR and good VR, but not the average Joe. The average Joe is not going to care that much. Um, and also, even though there's less uh, field of view, um, uh, you know, it does have a Snapdragon XR2 as well, just like the, the Quest. However, uh, the resolution, of course, inside of the uh, inside of the HTC Vive Focus 3 is way leaps and bounds higher than the Pico Neo 3 Pro for sure. Uh, the Pico Neo 3 Pro resolution is only, uh, if I'm not wrong, I don't want to say anything wrong because my memory sometimes does play up with me. Uh, so let me just go here, uh, Pico Neo 3 Pro uh, specs. Uh, the Pico Neo 3 Pro specs, here we go, here it is. Okay, um, basically it is... Per eye is 1920, uh, oh my god, where is it? Per eye, I don't want, I don't want two eyes, specs per eye. Okay, there we go. Uh, per eye is 1832 by 1920, which is exactly like the Oculus Quest 2, by the way. Um, or, or very similar to the Oculus Quest 2. 1832 by 1920, 1832 by 1920. So it's actually exactly the same. If we go here, there we go. So uh, 1820, yeah, exactly the same in terms of uh, graphic resolution. However, we have uh, for the gigabytes, in the Vive Focus, we have, okay, it's 120 degrees field of view in the Vive Focus, so it is better. I mean, on paper, the Vive Focus 3 uh, is 
Okay, my camera needs to focus on me. Okay, there we go. So uh, on paper, the Vive Focus 3 is a much better headset for sure. Hands down, it is better headset. However, uh, what the industry people are saying is that the sweet spot, which basically means the amount of clarity that you have in the lens, the amount of distance between the side or, or where, where it starts to blur, basically, when you have your, your headset on, uh, is, is much smaller sweet spot with the Vive Focus 3. So a lot of people are ha having issues when they put it on their head to have clear vision. They have to put it quite a bit, quite a lot. And also apparently the software inside uh, isn't as easy to uh, to go around, to go places. So there are certain things that they need to work on for the Vive Focus 3 uh, compared to, let's say, the Pico Neo 3 Pro at the moment is hands down a much better value for money uh, VR headset for enterprise, especially when it comes to standalone VR technology when compared to the Vive Focus 3. Why wasn't this mentioned in the in the article of the PCVR? Why? Why isn't it mentioned? Why? I tell you, I, I just don't understand. Uh, you know, and it also has XR2 chip, and it also has eight gigabytes of memory inside. Uh, very similar to the uh, Pico Neo 3 Pro. If I go to the memory for the Pico Neo 3 Pro, uh, ba -ba 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 -bam, where are you? Oh, it has six gigabyte of RAM, so two gigs less than the actual, uh, but for the Neo 3 Pro I, so this is the one where it has Toby eye tracking, which basically means when you focus somewhere, the, the actual headset will focus at that point and blur other points, so it saves memory, so things can actually move faster. So if you take the Neo 3 Pro I, then you can use the eight gigabytes of RAM, but the Neo 3 Pro, which is the one I have, which is the one here, let me just show you very quickly. Uh, let me just transition over here. So this Pico Neo 3 Pro here is a Neo 3 Pro, not the Neo 3 Pro. I has six gigabyte of RAM, 1832 by 1920. And let me tell you that the graphics in this thing are amazing. The streaming to the PC isn't too bad. The DP 4K video uh, display port cable, if you attach it to the PC, amazing graphics. If you're not used to super, super high-end graphics, you're not going to notice the screen door effect, but because I'm used to super high-end graphics, including the HP Reverb G2, then of course I do notice the screen door a little bit. It's tiny, teeny bit, but it is noticeable. But I think it's more of a hardware thing, sorry, a software thing than a hardware thing, because when I used the wireless um, streaming to the PC without any cables whatsoever, and when I stream apps inside of the Pico Neo 3 Pro without streaming to the PC, I don't notice that screen door effect. So I think it's a software thing, not a hardware thing, FYI. So hands down, Pico Neo 3 Pro, as far as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, is the best standalone VR headset for enterprise. Why isn't it mentioned anywhere in the article? I really got no clue. Why isn't the Unreal, um, you know, uh, AR glasses in there? I have no clue. Why is the Vive Co Cosmos in there? Why is the Vive, H Vive Pro 2? mentioned in there as one of the best VR headsets to get, I really don't know, because as I mentioned, base stations are a thing of the past. You're going to have to spend so much money to get the, the, the controllers from the Half-Life, uh, from, from, uh, from, from the Valve Index. Um, why is the Valve Index mentioned in there as the best VR headset, not the HP Reverb G2? I don't know. Even though the Valve Index, don't get me wrong, is still a very powerful uh, headset. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying value for money, guys. Value for money. Um, and why does it say Snapdragon inside of the Quest 2. I just can't trust these guys. I just can't trust this article. It's got a lot of mi misinformation. So let me give you my hands down best VR headset for 2022. Uh, as I mentioned before, first of all, we don't know what the best VR headset for 2022 will be because there are going to be a lot of new headsets. First of all, there will be the new Cambria headset announced by Meta, which will be announced around, we think, May, around there, around there, anything bef before May or after May. All right, first of all, Sony PlayStation are releasing the PS VR 2. That's another VR headset coming next year. Uh, Valve are going to be releasing a new VR headset next year as well, with potentially a standalone VR wireless headset as well in Q3 or Q4 of 2022. Apple are going to be releasing a new headset next year in Q3 or Q4 of 2022. Um, Alpara 
Okay, they could be the joker in the mix. Apparently they're releasing a new headset next year, but we have no proof and we really don't know who these guys are. So take it with a very pinch of salt. So what's the best VR headset that you, Lynx are releasing a new mixed reality VR headset next year as well uh, with the Lynx R1. So wait for that one. So these are all the new VR headsets coming out next year. And potentially there could also be two or three other VR headsets that we don't have a clue about that could be released next year as well, guys. Decker Gear say that next year on the website, there could potentially be another VR headset released next year, even though in the finance pitch to investors, they say within the next five years. So I like to rule out Decker Gear for now because the dates, are, the release dates on the website and the release dates in their investor pitch do not align. They just don't align. So but who knows? Okay. Um, and then also, as far as I'm concerned for what's, what's, what exists today, what you can buy today, what would be the best VR headset that you can buy today before the release of all these other new VR headsets, then I would say number one, PC VR, HP Reverb G2. Standalone, Pico Neo 3 Pro. Number two, Oculus Quest, only because, only because, only because of what Meta is known for in terms of all the atrocities they've done and all the bad stuff that they're known for in the industry, killing the competition, all the issues with the, um, all the issues with the, the data being, being taken, tracked, subliminal tactics, this, that, 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 lawsuits all over the world from all the governments. I just cannot recommend Oculus Meta's headset to be remotely number one. I'm very sorry, but I cannot. So the best standalone VR headset, Pico Neo 3 Pro, there are games in there that you can buy. They're not as many, of course, as inside of the MetaQuest store, but at the end of the day, there are some apps there good enough for people who are new to VR. There's about 30 or 40 titles that you can buy. Now yeah, it's gonna run you quite a long time before you can then splash more money on a new VR headset in the future. However, of course, if you don't care about the atrocities that Meta has done, then Meta is for you. The Oculus Meta Quest Store, uh, Meta Quest 2 is for you. But as I mentioned before, Meta will be releasing a new VR headset next year in about six to six months time, apparently around there. So, you know, you could wait for that one. Next VR headset to be the best, I would say, uh, for, for enterprise other than the uh, Pico Neo 3 Pro, would have to be the Varjo because Varjo has the best clarity, the best graphics, the best everything. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that money can buy today uh, when it comes for enterprise VR headsets. However, um, you could also try your hands with the HTC Vive Focus 3, but as I mentioned before, uh, there are a lot of issues with the sweet spot, worse than the HP Reverb G2 FYI, because HP uh, do have been known to have some issues with the sweet spot. However, I've had no issues and a lot of other people have no issues either too. For the king of PC VR, HP Reverb D2, hands down. Then I would say the Valve, uh, uh, sorry, I would say um, the uh, HTC Vive Pro 2, if you're looking to spend the money because it will cost you a whopping almost 3,000 US dollars. So I would say the Valve Index would be after the HP Reverb D2 and then the HTC uh, Vive Pro 2 uh, as third choice. Best AR glasses, Enreal, without a doubt, and then go for the, uh, for the consumer front. And then for the enterprise, I would go with HoloLens too. So there you go, guys. This is what I would say. And then everything else doesn't matter. Uh, I would not read or trust anything from PC Mac, as far as I'm concerned, from today onwards, especially when it comes to Asia. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I know it's a bit of a long one, but I hope it helped you. Do remember that you can enter to win a brand new HP Reverb D2, a brand new pair of cyber shoes, $50, 50, $50 voucher that you can redeem with your Oculus MetaQuest store. Also, your eight, your eight, your uh, Vive port and also your Steam VR store, sorry about that, uh, that we will be announcing on December 29th after the December 28th uh, competition with the VRCover.com. Two winners will be able to go uh, to the website and pick any items that they want valued up to 29 US dollars or 29 euros. Link in the description below and also the pinned comments as to how to enter that. So do make sure you're on a web Enable your bell after you subscribe uh, to, to, to follow up and to get all the details as to how you can enter the HP Reverb G2 competition with the cyber shoes and the vouchers and stuff. All right, guys, take it easy. I'll see you in the comments below, if not in another video very soon. Bye, guys.